Hey, what is going now, guys? Talk Nerd City here, back for another podcast week 19. We said we're going to up, up the ante, bring up the guests. Does it get bigger than this, Russ? Does it get bigger than this? For you at this minute in time? Probably not, no. <laughs> well, not. Welcome to the Thank show. Welcome to TNC HQ. It's a pleasure to have you along. Pleasure to be here. It I really think, is. I think. Good. We've, we've pulled out all the stops to get you um, multiple voicemails left on uh, the media team at Norwich City, but you wanted to come on. Did I? I think you did. I think I was told to come on. We paid, <laughs> paid you part of a fan engagement. Well, I'll tell you what. We <laughs> made Open some, communication. Oh, good. We made you some good. homemade hummus, yeah, and if nice. that doesn't want to bring you back, then I'm not too sure. We've got some what? Herbie P hummus. What'd you rate it out of 10? It's good. Solid seven. Solid seven? Yeah. <laughs> Is that, that all? Solid seven. God, we're going to get grilled here. No, it's now. nice. My it's mum nice, made it's, that. No, it's nice, but it's not made. Tell your mum it's lovely. Yeah? Maybe a bit more lemon next time. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> a, bit <laughs> more salt, a bit more salt. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, let's talk about the big news um, that everyone is, is going to be talking about recently. The new contract. You're Congrats. here for, Thank you. for a lot longer. Mm. We, we can't get rid of you just yet. No, it's been a while. Um, you happy? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I only had a year left, and obviously um, it's never ideal for a player to go into the last year's contract. Various reasons, in case you get injured. Yeah. Um, so Stuart mentioned it at the end of last season. And obviously, I said I, I, I wanted to stay. I've been here a long time, like I said. Care a lot for the club. Uh, and also feel that I've got a lot of unfinished business. So, um, you know, I see myself being here for a long time. Come yeah, on. Hopefully. Unfinished so, yeah, business. Mm. What, what is that business? Well, it gets back to the Premier League. Simple as that, like we did last time. And also, you know, my family's settled in in Norwich and that plays a big part in it. And uh, I, I see myself being here beyond... Beyond, beyond, my, beyond my playing days in whatever role that may be but I want to be part of it and Good. I know the club inside out been here a long time so I feel I've got a bit to offer still I mean obviously last season wasn't ideal we've, we've seen a lot of change at the club um, so not talking about last season remember no we're not talk, we might we're talk about it a little season. bit we'll touch we'll on it we'll band it we'll band it we we'll we'll band it on this podcast yeah we've we'll banned talking about Ipswich okay. and talking about unless you abuse talk about Ipswich if you want that's probably go on no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that later. But I mean, the new regime, we've got Daniel Farker and we've got Stuart Weber and a lot of change is happening. Is it important for you, for Wes, for the longer term players who know the club inside out to stay and, and to see this regime through? Yeah, I think you need continuity. I think you need people who uh, know what the club stands for, who have been there and done it and had experience of getting promoted out of this league. We've got a lot of young players who are going to need a helping hand, especially with a new regime because um, it might take time to adapt. It's certainly taking a bit of time to physically adapt to training sessions how hard we're working the, the intensity and the demands on us so um, I think it's important you know to have people like Wes myself uh, Cam and Jerome who have been there done it and um, the lads can look to and, and lean on I see that as a massive role massive part of my role mm. as captain of the football club in terms of helping the young lads um, deal with setbacks trying to keep trying to improve getting them to do extra whether it's in the gym stuff like that so uh, it's something I've always done. I'm still in touch with quite a few lads who've gone away and left, Cam McGee and people like that. But mm. I'm really pleased to see kick on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, I think we need people to, to be there and help help the younger ones especially. I mean, a big talking point over the... I mean, obviously in pre-season now, you've had your trip to Ireland. We played lower stuff, the brilliant lower stuff um, last weekend. And, and the big talking point from that is is this increased training regime that we've mm-hmm. seen. Now, I said to you off camera double workouts double training sessions you said it's more than that he was limping up the stairs and all the way up <laughs> yeah. I, wasn't, I, wasn't recovery, I wasn't breathing as hard as you were. although I must, I <laughs> yeah, must say get the lift. I must say I said go on Russ I'll let you, as soon as you had a double session I'll let you in the lift he went no 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 yeah. I'm walking up the stairs so he was stairs. puffing up the stairs, stairs, stairs he was breathing a little bit no, I don't no, know if he was no. nervous or he was just we'll get on to you just working we'll on. get on to you anyway um, this, 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 um, this new training regime I'm interested because one of the criticisms done that Alex Neil from a lot of fans is the team weren't fit enough is that a fair observation? Um, no, I don't think so. I think <clears throat> I think we were extremely fit. I think we had a really good sports scientist, head of sports science, Nick Davis, who's gone now. Yeah. Who um, we trained hard. I don't think it was a fitness problem. I think it was more a mentality problem. I said that last year. I think it's difficult to get the best out of people when mentally you're not as sharp maybe as you should be, and you're a little you're a bit low on confidence. And I think we probably had too many lads in the dressing room who were uh, who were probably like that last year. Mm. A bit low on confidence, lacked a little bit of belief. Um, and I think when it sounds it sounds stupid, but men, mentally you're not right. Mm. Um, physically you're not going to be as, as good as you should be as well. But we we trained hard. There's no doubt about. It. We still trained hard. We always, like I said with Nick, if stats football's so um, advanced sports science wise now. So if you don't meet certain stats, mm-hmm. certain data, you've got to do action. You've got to match that. Um, 
but yeah, the training, as you said, now has, has, has stepped up two sessions a day, every day. Uh, we've had one day off so far, which was which was yesterday, wow. uh, Sunday. So um, yeah, it's going to take a bit bit of time physically to adapt uh, and to get used to it. But I think it's really important for the manager to do that. He wants it like that because he needs to get his philosophy as, across as quickly as possible. Mm. And um, he said, you know, I think he's accepted that there might be a couple of casualties, a few injuries along the way. People adapting to it, mm. but in the long run, we'll be much stronger and much fitter for it and, and ready for the for a long season. This this new regime, I think. I mean, you obviously know what the fans' kind of opinion is on in general, but it seems like it's, it's gone down well for a change this big. I don't think you off. I don't think you, you. It's rare that it goes down so well across the whole fan base. Was it needed at the football club? Do you think that change was um, needed? I think it's something different. Something it's an approach the football club never had. Um, but as I said to you before, off, off off the camera, I think it's um, last season probably bought. Well, it's given the owners some time to think mm. and and decide. And the board where they want to go with it, really. Because I think it's all been so short term as players, because that's how you have to be as a player. You just need to win the next game and try and achieve yeah. your, your season's goal. And, but also as a as a board, as a club, it's like let's get to the Premier League. Now let's stay in the Premier League. Mm. We'll do everything we can to stay in the Premier League, rather than actually having a plan that's going to mm. enable you. Because it frustrates the life out of me that we went up the year Swansea went up. We went up a year before Southampton. Yeah. And if you look at where they are now compared to us, it's frustrating. But that's not. That's no one else's fault. You, you get caught up in it. You need to stay in the mm. Premier League. So, so last year could, long term, it sounds stupid, but be a really good thing to happen to the football club. A positive thing because it will be. Yeah, you take stock and you go, actually, right. We need to, we need a long term plan here, mm. uh, and hopefully that's what it's done. So you say there, it's, it's, it's no one's fault that this kind of vision was short term, and, and obviously we've seen success. Maybe not so much at Swansea over the last season, but certainly at Southampton. <coughs> what did they do differently to us? Because obviously they've done whatever the planning is better than what we've done um, it's, it's two different clubs so it's difficult to say but I think they've <clears throat> they've kind of built on a philosophy about their academy yeah. bringing in they've got a you know a thing where they have to have six academy graduates either on the pitch or in the match day squad whether they're on the bench or whether they're playing stuff like that I think they've just and they've stuck to it so I think if they'd have got relegated in that time they would have still stuck with that and still stuck with that mm. plan um, and they've also had the role that we've now got so they've had someone who's been the director of football, whatever you want to call him, sporting director, technical director, they've had that role, someone else doing the business, so they can really mould the football way, football side of it the way they want to. Mm. It's too big now, football, for, for my opinion, for one person to run the business side and to be really good at the football side as well. Um, that's difficult. So uh, obviously we've now gone that way of Stuart, who knows the game, and Steve doing the, the business side of the football club, and hopefully it works out as well for us as it has for, 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 for mm. that club. So, I mean, to the left of you, I think you've got your number one fan. I think you should set up the Rose Mullen fan club, Chris. Uh, well, there's no reason not to. I'm not going to change my tactics just because he's here. I think uh, there's been a lot of unnecessary comments that are a wee bit too far. Um, I, ju- I just think in general that, that there's just lo- a lot of needless negativity when you've got a player like Russ who obviously cares about the football club, obviously wants to be here, hopefully, when he hangs up his boots. I'm going to make him sign a, I'm going to make him sign a TNC deal at the end. <laughs> Not official I will be here after <laughs> I hang up my boots. Um, I think there was possibly, it'd be interesting to get Russ's take if he wants to answer that question, but I think there's possibly players that probably didn't want to be here the last couple of seasons and... Why would you not want Russ to sign a contract? You know, of course I'm going to be a, a big fan. I think um, I think if, if we're together as one and the fans believe and you know and and the man the right manager is in charge, mm. there's absolutely no reason why Russ can't boss it in defence. It Russ, it'd be it'd be really interesting to get your take on your personal performances last season. How do you rate them? How did you rate them in the Premier League? Um, were they up to your standards? Were they up to the club standards? Um, I don't think anyone, any one of us can say we were up to standard every game last yeah. year. I thought there were some good ones mm. and then I thought there were some really bad ones. I just kind of reflected the team really and it probably that was the majority of us, hence why the team had that form. Um, especially at home, I thought we played really mm. well at times um, and obviously we got a lot of the ball, which is a strength of mine. I'm not a six foot five defender that's going to head it over the stand and and boom it I like to have the ball and, and get it off the goalkeeper and I think top some, passer aren't you top passer <laughs> in the team apparently so yeah um, is that proven should we put, I think the stats we... proved it last year Graham Dorans behind Graham Dorans I would like to just bring something up Russ actually now this guy to the right of you has slated you um, in, I've heard, yeah. in, in numerous numerous podcasts um, and this is what you all wanted me to bring this up folks So I think slate is a harsh word Russ, would you Would you? I've, been, I've seen some tweets and I'd say slate is really? undercooking it probably. yeah yeah. I think yeah. you know you probably need to backstep quite a lot now so <laughs> um, 
what would you would you like to you know maybe just comment on your tweet about Russ's technical ability or do you want to leave that for him so, afterwards to sort out with you? Russ signed his contract and I tweeted. You I'm, planned I'm this. Word you for backhand, planned backhanded speed. compliment. Well, kind of. Here wasn't. comes the politician. Not sure it was a compliment. Two, no, you, one you, you, you messaged me and you were like, thanks so much for that comment. What a compliment. No, you didn't really. You but messaged said, me on LinkedIn first, didn't you? <laughs> hoping I hadn't seen that. <laughs> well, someone, seen it. someone sent it to Definitely. me. Anyway, not the most technically gifted, but you won't find any player at any club that cares more. I think that is a compliment. You should care, couldn't you? You should care about the football club you play for, though, shouldn't you? So does, I'm not sure it is a compliment. That well, should be does, a given, does, shouldn't I don't think everyone does care about that. No, I played with plenty, I don't, but you should. That's a minimum requirement, you should. Mm. Mm. So, what do you think about the most, not the most technically gifted? I'd say probably not the most pretty on the eye. But I think get the job done. In terms of the championship, why not? You've got a beard now, like Michael Bailey. Look, this is yeah, the exactly. trend. Yeah, that's... Michael's is strong. Yeah. Um, well done, Michael. Um, but no, I, I, like I was saying, I like to have the ball and I like to take the ball for goalkeeper. Mm. It's not always mm. going to go to plan. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we'll see. I've got. Ma- I've, listen, I've got a real belief in myself. I wouldn't have got as far as good. As I, I'm not deluded. I know. I know. I've got mm. weaknesses. I've got every player has. Um, and I still work, I'm 31, there's still room for improvement for sure. And I, I work on that every day and I try and get a couple of young lads with me to, to do it as well. So You know what I really want to know? What is it like being known as the nicest guy at Norwich City, yet um, slated every single week? Yeah, I, I, to be honest, like it, it's nice to be known as a nice guy and all that. I think I'm a pretty honest guy. Yeah. Um, I think I, no matter how we play, I always work as, yeah. I give it everything I can. And it's not, you're not mm-hmm. always going to play well. You're not no. always, you know, in any walk of life, in any job, you're not always going to have a good day mm-hmm. at the office. And it's just it's different for us. We're only judged on ninety minutes at the end of the week. Mm. You know all the work that you you put in, all the stuff that goes yeah. that no one sees in terms of with the youngsters, with the staff, and being there for people and trying to drive the place with energy. And mm. especially when it's not going well, and it's yeah. difficult. Um, so you judge on ninety minutes, which I totally understand. But just frustration. I think some people have made their mind up before they come to the game okay. how you play. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on. Facebook. I'm not on social media. My dad tells me he has a get, cheeky look every now and again. My dad tells me I get battered, um, <laughs> so he's the worst one for it. I've told him not to. Guys, it's like, <laughs> good. I'm pleased he got caught. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think it's my brother who sent me that actually. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I love It's got eyes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, obviously you're aware of it. But if listen, if you let it affect you, then you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong job. Obviously, it's nice to be liked by everyone. And to be honest, since I've been the vast majority of fans. 99% of them, especially when I see them and stuff, have been brilliant, mm. been brilliant to me. To be fair, I think the, the reception on the whole, as a fan, looking at what other fans were thinking when you signed that new contract, it was it was one of praise, it was one of happiness. Yeah, I think the majority were very, very happy with it, weren't they? Not that Russ cares, yeah. he's like, got the deal, yeah, isn't like, he? Like I said, I give everything like, for the football club. It's not always going to be... Mm. You're not always mm. going to play every game as well as you possibly can. Yeah. But I think on the whole, the club of what I've given the club for whatever they paid me, whatever's been, it's worked out quite well. Was it 200, so, 250 It was 100 grand? rising to 200 if we got promoted, I think. Exactly, yeah. I mean, cheerful, Devout. cheerful. I remember mean, we got a voicemail of Barry Fry when we got promoted to the Premier League. Well done, my son. <laughs> Another 50 grand for Posh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. and you know, no, honestly, where I have to really praise Russ in front of him is last season when our backs up against the wall where there was no confidence, where no one wanted to do it, he was always the one in front of the camera that was being honest, and that's what frustrates me the most about the criticism. Someone had to do it, and he was a poor sod. I don't think it. that works in my favour at all, though, because I think when we lose, I just get rolled out. This, well, 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 this, is, my, this is my point. Cup. This is my point. Um, so I've got it's part of the role. Yeah, that. it's part of the role as captain. Yeah. I accept that, but it doesn't personally. It, it doesn't, it doesn't do you. me any favours because yeah. it's like mm. I can't win in that situation because you yeah. get loads of fans going, "Oh, you've got to be getting the same old crap," or some people going, "You know, I." It's, so after the Brighton one, I'm sure it got mixed reviews, but I'm fed up with going out and being mm. cliched, and I, I try and be as honest as possible. Bang on the money. I think um, it's what the fans needed, Russ. And, and the wanted reaction from the players after that as well. So it's not like I haven't said it to the players and I've gone out there. Mm. So mm. People don't see that. So in a, I've probably done it too quickly after the Brighton one because yeah. I'd had a real, real go. Uh, yeah. Not a go, but I'd had been really honest in the dressing room and then mm. went straight and done mm. that. So you probably need to take a step back. So then the Huddersfield one. You know you get beat badly, and you know I, have to, I know I have to go out because no one else wants to do it. Yeah. It's like, but it's that difficult. was last season. But that was no, I mean, yeah, last season's season. gone. I do want to quickly touch on that. On that no, Brighton. no, I do want to quickly touch because it was one of my questions. Actually, I had it wrote, written down. I mean, I was I was at Brighton. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't the worst day, and um, you <laughs> wasn't know that, the best day. That. And look, I'm just going to say I said it. I think that was the day Alex Neil should have gone. You don't have to comment on that. But that interview afterwards from you was one of the most unbelievable things I've seen out of Norwich City in my lifetime in terms of truth 
I, th I think we saw one from Cameron Jerome later on in the season where it was similar, but you look genuinely cut up about that. And I, I've never seen that from a player, I don't think, before. You, you said you tore into the lads in the dressing room. That's what it should be like. Was that one of the most... Was that one of the lowest points in Oregon City? Um, yeah, I think added to, it's the team I supported as a kid. It's where I'm from, so I know a lot of people in the stand. Uh, <coughs> all my family were there. My little boy was mascot before the game, yeah. and it should have been a good. It should have been a, a better moment than it than it was. And I think there's times when the criticism and whatever is really justified, mm. and that was that. Whereas other times, I think you're giving everything. I think Pete, for me, you want the fans to turn up inside the ground, especially this year. I think it should be a clean slate, not yeah, just yeah. for myself or everyone. Mm -hmm. Just come. Support people. Be put. I know it's not going to happen, and it's not. And people go, oh, it's not realistic." You know, we pay our money and all that stuff. I totally agree with that. You're entitled to an opinion, but mm. I think when you're inside the stadium, I don't think it helps anyone when they get booed and stuff like that. Mm. So for me, like, I don't understand when I got booed before my 300th game. Was when, that a thing? When, yeah, when I, oh. I only heard a few. I don't know how many people ever. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a real minority, but yeah. for me, does it hurt? Yeah, a little bit because yeah. it's like. I've given everything to this club. I might not play as well as you want me to all the time, but I've played under five managers now who have all played me, whether it's at right back or centre half. That's not because I'm a nice guy. That's not because <laughs> no, I work harder than anyone else. It might be a bit of it. But there's obviously a reason for that. Yeah. Under four of them, I've been captain, so I mean, they obviously see some. And the same with Scotland. So mm. I've played for help yeah. for however long. You know, when other people have gone off, I've captained them a couple of times, and it's mm. that's not because I'm a nice guy. That's because. You know, I'm obviously a good football player. <laughs> I think another thing as well is the fact that you fronted up, and I think an issue that we brought up last season was <laughs> an issue for us. What was last season is on an away day where we'd been spanked by the opposition. A lot of the players seem to not come up to the fans to appreciate mm. them because, yeah. to be honest with you, I mean, to, I think their their booing was justified after a very heavy loss, but. You you would always come over to the fans and clap, and the same goes for the home game. So mega mega frustrating that there that there was booze. And I agree with you. We've already talked about it, Jack. That there's been a ma a massive shift in the attitude of the supporters already. If you're on social media, you would have uh, yeah, yeah. you would have you would have seen that. Um, we'll get you on Twitter at the end of this. Right? <laughs> that's my challenge. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. You can manage it for me, huh? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cut there price. <laughs> yeah. Digital marketing. There you go. Um, so yeah, no, I think that I think that's it for last season, really, Jack. I think I think we need yeah, to just move on. Clean, Clean slate. slate. Move on. Optimism. Let's let's go. Hundred percent. It's interesting though. You, you say there about um, about the boo and about the atmosphere. Something that a lot of fans, a lot of people have grouped together to try and get the atmosphere better at Carrow this season coming. As a player. Does atmosphere affect you as much as us fans hope it does? Or is it um, kind of just in the background and it doesn't affect you? No, I think you? it does. It does. It's, it can give you that extra little... I, I look at games like Derby a few years ago. Yeah. Um, what, Arsenal, the game? Yeah. yeah. The best, that's the best atmosphere I've, you know, I've, yeah. I've ever played in at Carrow. It was amazing. 2-2, two, two, you look, nothing's really going to happen. Mm. It was the atmosphere was unbelievable. Fans pipe up. Um, I got a, I got a walking stick in the head on that day. I was in the <laughs> community stand. It was and worth I, it, wasn't it? I genuinely nearly got knocked out and missed that moment, but 100 percent worth it. Yeah, and I think, but it can work the other way as well. If, if it's you go one or down within five minutes and the play starts getting a little yeah. bit mm. apprehensive and tense, and we're going to be playing a different style of football this year, it's for sure. People are going to have to be patient. Uh, mm. It might take a little bit of time. Um, I think it'd be much more exciting. It's a different to watch. style I think of football the fans that will you've been it. used to. Well, since I've been here for sure, and I'm sure it'll be different to you to yeah. what you guys have ever been used mm. to. So, um, but I hope, yeah, people. I think they'll be excited by it, and I think the atmosphere. Marley Watkins asked me today. We're in the ice bath. He said, "Oh, what, what are the fans? <laughs> what are the fans like here?" Um, and I just said, "You know, if the place is rocking, it's one of the best yeah. places to play." And I, yeah. from speaking to, under the lights, from speaking to players who have come and played here, they don't enjoy it. And that yeah. it's, it's a partisan crowd. We're, we're the club's a massive part of the community, and that's mm. how it should be. It should be the, a place where footballers go. We're going to Norwich. Yeah. This week. It's so. miles away. It's a slow game. Yeah, the fans are right on top yeah. of you. You know, if if they start well and the fans get on top, it's a difficult place mm. to play. I think it'd be. I think it'd be much better the next season. I already do. I so think at times last year, especially at you home, I think it. it was. I thought it was still pretty good considering the. I feel like it was know, inconsistent. I yeah, think, if you look, yeah, but it was probably reflected the team. Yeah, right? so no, that's true. And you look at like the Reading game, and we, I know we bat them, so it's easy. But you look at games like that. I thought they were. I thought the atmosphere was really. I think the biggest. Mm -hmm. I think the best atmosphere for me last season was Villa when we beat them at home one 0 Yeah, that was lights, yeah, well, that was rocking that night. It really was. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned there about Marley Watkins. Obviously, made it a few signings already. How, how have they settled in? And really well. Yeah. I think that obviously Christoph's used to. Training this way in Dortmund, so he's he's used to it. So yep. he's jogging. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Uh, he's walking the, around. The other lads are uh, 
the other lads again will take time yeah. but um, what they all had something different which is really good so mm. like Marley is honest it, it'll be a fan's favourite he runs his socks off yeah. like, he, good runs clever runs in behind uh, he's really direct Harrison Reed's a great football player a really good replacement for Graham Dorrance who uh, mm. so I see him go yeah because for me Do- Graham's underrated as a player I think I that's one thing I got right this season. Yeah, I've said that many so a time. For me, like there's pl- there's people who the, who, the, who the fans will really appreciate that might not be as appreciated by his teammates. So like talking personally as well, I'd, for me, like having respect of your teammates and, and the coaching staff and the manager you play for is the most important thing. Yeah. If you're liked by the fans, of course it's brilliant and everyone loves it and it's great. But for me, <coughs> you need to have that in addressing where people know they can yeah. rely on you and, and respect you. And I know that I've got that from my teammates, mm-hmm. and that's important to me. Mm-hmm. So that. That's why you, all the other stuff, you need to shut off from it really being a football these days. There's so many distractions and things like that. But I think with Graham, the best footballer at the club in terms of having to ball at his feet. Really? Sure. Oh, any player what a t- compliment. Any player would tell you that. Well done, Rangers. Um, Have fun next season. And I think it's a great signing for them. He, he wanted to go home you, at some point. Yeah. There's so many external factors in mm. football. Um, you move home. You move from home at a really early age. You have kids. There's no support mm. network. It's, and you're, of course, you're financially... You, you, you're doing okay, you know. You, you get paid well for doing a job you love, so people understand. People go, "Well, at least they got money." Yeah, you'll be retired yeah. a long time and stuff. But at some point, that probably comes into play with people, as it has done with Johnny as well. Um, so they both go with our, the lads' best wishes. But Graham, mm. I thought that's going to be a big loss. But then we signed Harrison Reed, and I've looked at him for two or three days, and looks really, really good footballer, good passer, yeah. really similar to Graham. Obviously younger, and he's hungry to show. Mm. He's been on the fringe at Southampton now for a couple of years. And I think he's ne- he needed a move like this to sort mm. of show what he's got, and I think it'd be really good for us. Don't you think some of the youth players could set up? Like, yeah, definitely. Could, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I think they can I think, really, um, really come into play this season. I don't, I don't want to put pressure on any of them because we've got some really, really mm. good youngsters at the club. Um, and for me, like, do you think they get played more? So I think they will. Yeah, I think so. I think I think they have to because the squad, the manager doesn't want a squad so big mm-hmm. in terms of twenty-five professional yeah. players who are getting paid, you know, well. So he, he wants some young lads. And he's used to developing young players as well. Um, so if you look at someone like Jamal Lewis, who's got mm. one of the best attitudes I've seen, always doing extra. Two years ago, people probably wouldn't have said he was going to do as well as he is. But if you look at him now, if he's managed right, mm-hmm. he could be a big player for us in, in seasons to come. Mm. He's got a real good mentality, which for me as yeah. a young lad is the most important thing. Because we've got a lot of players with ability. I've seen a lot of players with a lot of talent, but if mentally they're not prepared or they don't do the right things or not professional enough, they're not going to do it. And look at him and I think... He's got everything. Is that the one that you're most excited about, Russ? Coming for me, through? he's the youngest, probably. Is that because um, he's a defender? You got a soft spot for him? Yeah, I, I just I we're, just love we're his massive atti- Madison lovers. I it? just love his attitude. So James is a great player. Um, he's he's been a bit frustrated since he signed, mm. obviously from not playing. Um, yeah. He's been more frustrated. Have you? <laughs> Don't star me. He's a good footballer. Listen, they've all, all got they've all got stuff all to learn. Player. He's technically a brilliant player. I like him as a lad. Really like all him. I actually all good lads. But if you look at like. Unfortunately, he's had Alex Pritchard and Wes Houlihan in the yeah. game. So, I understand people be want him to play and all that. But, listen, these young lads, they need time. So, like mm. Jacob last year, you know, people gave him... I remember he missed a shot and he started getting a bit of grumbles in the crowd and stuff. And then he went and scored two minutes later. These are young lads. You, If you want young players to come through for your football club they're them. from, yeah, yeah, you need to get behind them. Totally. As do I. And I, I get frustrated with them at times. Of course you do. They, yeah. they, but they need to learn from mistakes. Yeah. They need, they're going to make the wrong decision at times. But... They could be massive, massive. We've got a real group of players now. Even Remy Matthews, a goalkeeper. Like I said, Pritchard, Madison, the two Murphys. You look at Harry Toffolo, hopefully. you know, If you look at all these lads, Ben Godfrey, great attitude, really good player. Yeah. Might not be this season. They might get blooded in this season. But in a few years to come, you know, you should be excited about these lads. And, and yeah. they should form the nucleus of a really, really good team. One of my players that I'm most excited to see this season is Angus Gunn. And you better protect him at the back. I hope so. He's yeah. my buddy, so I'm expecting. I hope he bails us out after. I'm, so <laughs> I'm expecting you to defend him. Right? He's um. You can't I remember, stand in I remember front Angus when I first come. He was in, in around the train because he was mm. obviously in the academy. Yeah. And he's shot up a little bit since. then. Just but a little. It was his he's, first day he's a monster. Today. He's a big unit, isn't so, yeah. Uh, and I'm excited. But, I mean, from what I know about him, and what the, obviously the young lads know him. Um, yeah. He's a really good lad. He'll yeah. fit in well, and it's a big year for him. He needs to go and show what he can do. He's not played a league game yet, so. Yeah. You know, whatever happens, we'll stick by him and we'll make sure that he, he ends this season in a much better place and, and he's learned a lot. Right, that was a nice little chat about the youngsters. One last yeah. youngster I want to talk about, Aston Oxborough. Big keeper. Has he has he got potential? Is he going to make it? Yeah, he has got... Well, look at the size of him. He's definitely got potential. No, he's a good guy, Aston. He's really quiet for a big guy. Mm. Um, but he's improved a lot. 
He's in, we've got a real good age. I think it's a Norwich thing, isn't it? Producing good goalkeepers over the years. Um, yeah, definitely. We've got a real good set of young goalies coming through. Uh, like I said, mentioned Remy already. Um, Yarmouth boy. Yarmouth boy, yeah. yeah. Big up Remy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's a good. Uh, Aston's good. And it, I don't know what their plan, the plan is from this year, whether it's a plan of 23s or going alone or whatever, but um, he'll have a chance if he carries on. I always use Aston as to show how badly my football career went downhill because I used to play yeah. centre-back with Aston oh did you? I used to be a defender we all know how bad you are like you're, you're, right. you're not that technically you... gifted are you? Like, that's the thing I'm not, I, I love no, you can go a long way and not being technically gifted hey. um, I, care, I care about the club though <laughs> I care, I'll tell you what Russ Ooh, actually blimey. I've um, I've ca- I play five aside yeah. do you know who I play for? Inter Mat- Matalan is yeah. it? Right. so Inter Matalan. we've gone to the dizzy heights of second in the in the flag championship and I thought you know, I've slated you. Yeah. Now's your time to slate me. Okay. So I've cut together. This really, is our last game against really the mighty Hemsby. Yeah. Now these are a good team. Are you in the yellow or the? No. So we're we're in the we're in the blue. This is me. Okay. I can take the corner. Uh, I haven't got any black socks, so I have to wear yellow. It's not even got the full kit on. Look at it. Well, I've got these kits sorted. No, you're different to the rest of your teammates. Oh. You're special. Anyway, oh, so this is going to be good. Let's start. So got a little, got a little corner here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Let's get that. Right, so, and then I completely oh. missed it. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, let's just run through that game. That's a nutmeg, You almost stacked it there, Jack. Now, talk that's me through this. That's so, the pot. Great, great, great cut, man. Now, that's a decent corner. Yeah, it was. That's woeful. That's a nutmeg. Is that <laughs> woeful? You missed the ball. Yeah. <laughs> any any. I don't want to dress it up. Any, uh, your, your work rate to get there is fantastic. I care a lot. But then you don't slow down. Okay, you don't so, set yourself. Anyway, it eventually came to nothing. I tracked yeah. my man back. It was all good. Next clip we've got coming up. Um, so... Switched off, let the man inside you. Lucky, keep it safe. Dude. Switched off. Switched off. My, ma- my man Malik was, was tracking back. Got yeah. the ball here. Loads of time. Your touch is woeful. Driving bud. in. Hello. Oh, <laughs> give the ball. There's not, even a, there's not even one of your players up there. Well, that's. Are the you going to show this on the? Yeah, yeah. So show. people are going to see it. So in this situation, I love, no, I love the first bit. Look, credit where it's due. You take it on the back foot. Right. Okay. Back take foot. It, so that's good. You take it back foot. There you go. There. So now you what look you up, do now you're, you look up, you're aware, you're driving, yeah. this is the problem now. You haven't got a picture in your head, have you? What does Russ Martin do here? You haven't got a picture. So what, what, what picture do I need? I'd probably chop the big man and go either go back out to the goalie or switch play off. Just fire it into his feet, Jack. Give it yeah. to him and go again. That's what I tried messing to around, do. Jack. I tried, you dinked it. Well, I tried to dink just it back. Just bounce it trust your team, just trying to be too fancy. Just bounce it there and go the other side. Too much basong. So you don't write that? No, I don't like reaction either. Now I like it. There you, you go. You don't like the reaction. Look, now, you, now you've got the ball, you run. When you haven't, you don't do anything. Oh, this is superb. Right, next clip. So I'm up here. I'm, I'm meant to be a right back, actually. Right, because yeah. I love, you know, you've inspired me so much to become a right back. So, you're ball's in a position. Side here. Oh, Good movement. So, look at that. That's a yeah, nice little play. Nice. And then that. Oh, just. Now, talk me through. now t- first of all, give me a bit of praise for this. Because I like No, I like that. <laughs> good awareness. So, and the way you take it. That's, yeah, that's not good. bad. It's good. That now you've scored some screams into the Yeah, you don't set yourself, do you? He's moaning as well, like he wants Oh yeah, he was yeah, yeah. fuming. He was fuming, yeah. Mallet. Um <laughs> To be fair, look if you like look at him way. now, you maybe should just slip him in and it's a goal probably, isn't it? Look look how much of the goal you've got to aim for there. I know. You that don't you don't believe in it yourself. That's shocking. <laughs> Actually you? I you did. Don't. No, you don't. No, That's I did believe in it myself. I thought I was going kind of You look all right there. Up to there, it looks good. But the back foot comes up and you're leaning back. That's just shit. Okay, so Actually, yes. I've, I've got a one in. I've got a one in one ratio at the moment. Thirty one and thirty one. So I'm, I'll take that. There you go. Right. So next bit of movement. He's our best player, Mallet. Lovely play. Uh, now it comes back into me here once oh. again. <laughs> Have it. No. <laughs> now once again, you, you say. What are you trying to do there? We're not going to see that next season, Norwich, are we? Nah, None of that. So no, Russ, no. best passer, second best, uh, second best behind Dorans. Loves the ball at his feet. What does Russ Martin do here? Right, so, look, at your, look at your teammate. Just give it to him. Yeah, but the, this there's man is close someone's in a better, But he, he's he's closing you down. But there's no way he's doing it quickly. Look at the fella, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing it quickly. This is he? a good team. He's Russ. also committed that side. You can step in. I, I, step I, I in. back you in a race over him. Really? Yeah. Now, so the aim here was also Malik's got to come inside and give you a little angle, and he's standing behind that. He's standing. Be- Jimeno, look at Jimeno. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is. So Jimeno's Malik's got to sleep. He looks apart. Jimeno. He loves it. He oh, we've not praised our kits yet. All right, he so. hasn't even got a kit that fellow. He's wearing a bib. Yeah, we'll let him off. Right, so I've been pulled out to the right here. Yeah. Oh, what do you write? Very passive. And then, oh no, are you tired at that point? This I was puffing a bit at this yeah, point. Yeah. We're, we're about you've ten got minutes to keep in. Keep going backwards, isn't you? Do you bring him down? If you're Russ Martin there, there I'm fouling. If you've been schooled, yeah, one hundred percent, he's coming down. Yeah, yeah. bring him down. Oh, really? I don't react like you just go. Like, oh. well, yeah. I, I trust my teammates. Oh, I trust right, my right. teammates. Love <laughs> it. 
But so, you've done brilliant there. You've forced him backwards. Yeah, I'll, I'll, now you've got to be this as side. Soon as, as soon as you let him pass, the snake pits on your back, Jack. That is true. You can't get out of there. Let, make him go back to see, the goal. Your I, job's done. Don't uh, commit yourself. See, I was trying to cut the pass here. No, no, no. Is that wrong? Where's the, where's the most danger now? I'm going to improve his understanding of the game. Well, <laughs> That's no danger, is it? The goalie. That's true. So probably the most danger is back here. Where I, yeah. Well, now he's driving into space, isn't he? He's got options. Okay. You need to just think a bit more. It's Jack. a good turn. For, is that Jimeno again? That's Jimeno. <laughs> Poor Jimeno. No, it's not. It's the ninety-nine dog. Who's oh, that's Ravi. 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 And then he goes. In, he goes into Gaffer. I know that eventually. Oh yeah. That eventually comes. Oh, well, that's, see, that's, what you should have done, you. that's what you should have done. Failed him. Uh, well done, the big man. That's the big. The I gaffer. think we've got. I think we've got one last clip in here. Anyway. Oh no. So right, we've taken the fr- the quick free kick. Yeah. Camera begin look like. Now it's you're going in. to me. You're in. Now I'm in. What does he do? That's a touch. Oh my god, just hit as hard as you can after as well. That was the thing. Jack, Jack, now, you, you, you've made some you bombing runs. Right? You need to compose yourself here. Your touch needs to go inside, doesn't it? Goes oh. inside. You can't even blame the pitch, it's a 3G. <laughs> and then I, I just want to see a bit, I just want to see the cross a bit more relaxed as well. Just hit it as hard as you can. That's, that's, that's What's the man's going to do? I, if think, it comes to I think he's well and truly got his own back there. He's been dealt smash it. Super. So, are you worried about me taking oh. your place? Um, probably not, no. Although there'll probably be people asking for you to take my place, but no. <laughs> right, anyway, um, that's me putting my place. Chris, you got some questions? We've both got some questions. We have both. We've, we've, do you like this, by the way? I think yours are okay, realistic. It's very professional. I yeah. think yours are realistic and mine are a bit far fetched to make it a wee bit more interesting because I think Russ is a bit bored of talking about Loving his hummus. Last yeah. season. Last season's hummus. gone. We're done with Is it gone? We're done with yeah. yeah. Is it still 7 out of 10? 7.2. Oh, Ooh, hello. Take There's take a bit it. more flavour at the bottom. Right. Uh, first question is if Delia. Sold, if, she, if she sold so many more cookery books that mm-hmm. she had the most money in the world, who would you bring to Norwich City Football Club? One player. One, one player. player. Just just one. That's all you're allowed. I think it'd be uh, Ronaldo for me. Would it? Yeah. Okay. Ronaldo over Messi? We're going to have the Ronaldo Messi debate, aren't we? Yeah, Ronaldo. No, we're not, we're not going to have that debate. Ronaldo for me. But Ronaldo, okay, yeah. good. I like that question. Over to you, Jack. Next one. Um, quick fire. This is quick fire. Quick fire, I need, I need, it Come needs on. to be slow enough for me to read. Right, I'll, I'll do my next question then. Go on then. Daniel Farker in three words. Oh, three words. Um, you got 20 seconds. Intense. Yeah. Um, is he? Is he scary? Do you like... He comes out to the three no, words. No, no, he's a good guy. guy. He's a good guy. Do, does he enter the room and you go, oh God, he's a big man, because he looks like he's, he's done exactly, a He's got good banter as well. He's, is he's it? quite funny, yeah. yeah. So he's intense. Um, he has a real... I'm going to say philosophy because he has a real yeah, style philosophy. and philosophy on the game and how it should be played. Um, and also, I don't, I don't, he's he's good with people. He's got he's got an aura about person. him, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really know how to describe it. Good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good. He's good. Yeah. I think that's massively underrated, a manager, a manager having an aura. In any, in any walk of life, I think, any business or whatever it is, the person who leads you, mm-hmm. you need to be able to look at that person and, and feel something for mm. that person mm. rather than content and you don't really want it you need that you need that person you need to believe in you him and, and you need him to believe yeah, in yeah, you yeah, yeah 100% and in, 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 at this minute in time he's got you know the lads are going this is this is good I like this we're going to buy into this and I think if you'd have asked me that Chris one of my words would have been soothing his voice <laughs> he needs to be getting on audio books and yeah. just people yeah. <laughs> they go to the <laughs> I can't wait. I, I was not expecting that voice when he first did it. It's just so yeah. calm, but it's good. It's, it's a good. Beautiful thing. It's good. Um, right, let's he is calm. It. He's really calm. Yeah, actually. good. Yeah. So that's and another word. We'll let you I think Christoph said he's ob- he's really objective. Okay. And I think that's a good good word to okay. explain. Yeah. Uh, trust me to bring things back down. Worst moment as an Orange player. Oh, Jack. Um, sorry. Probably relegation. Obviously, it's happened twice. Um, but I think the the second time it shouldn't have happened especially after the start we just lost our way really um, that and in terms of just individual moment would be the would be the bright moment I expect yeah Chris bring it bring that bring it um, favourite Norwich City goal I think I know um, what he's going to say here. actually I've got I've, I've got, got two in mind I've got a different one I think I bet you he doesn't pick it as well Jacko's against Derby in the last minute but in terms of quality in that would be Naves one in the, in the playoff final I think Brilliant. What about your ones? Are yours? Yeah. Oh, mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't care about anyone else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is about oh, you. You're on the podcast. Such a team player, player. <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? You're too um, nice. You're too nice. Yeah. Uh, the Brighton one, I think, for sure. Yeah. Although, the, yeah. I think the Cardiff one in the last minute mm-hmm. when we went up from the championship yeah. and Paul Lambert accused me of not meaning it yeah. in the gesture room after, it was, uh, that was a good one. For me, it was last season for Pete. Oh, for Pete, yeah. That was yeah. I'll tell you what, yeah. that meant so much more than any other goal, honestly. 
Literally, I just yeah, you you I just class, just absolutely class, just loved it. I, w- I wish it's what football's about. That is literally and that's what Norris is about. From Caroline saying congrats on the new deal, I'm really yeah, just saying that. So she, great family. I was, well, you, you met Pete, didn't you? Mm. He's such a good guy. And yeah, but that's what makes this football club different. I think is everyone who works at the club pretty much is a Norwich fan, mm. and it means so much to them. Yeah. Um, and he was just a l- lovely, lovely fellow. It really meant a lot. To you know, need to be able to do that. You, you know, you've, you've, you've taken your stick and you've also got a load of fans as well, but I wish that we could have filmed Chris when you scored that because <laughs> that would have, I think that would have meant a lot to you because you don't see them moments as players. Yeah. I was emotional. It, it was emotional yeah. for me just because I spoke to... Mm. I went up in the box to see them before the game and I said, look, we'll make sure we send off Pete in the right way as a team. It was really important. And I said that in the, in the huddle with the lads. I said, Did you know, you? this is... This is bigger than us today. It's not about us. It's about doing it for someone who deserves it. And That's fortunately, class. they asked for four 0 but we've done a bit better than that. So you didn't deliver. I was a good team it. as well. I was on the verge of. I was. I was basically, to be honest with you, I, I was a mixture of emotions. I was obviously happy that we scored. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was angry. I was like, he's up against the snake pitch. Come on, then. And that 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 brought out the best of me. I was also just very emotional. I thought I was going to cry. But it was brilliant, and, and I think, I think that's I did exactly that as well. I think about. a few people were unhappy yeah. about that. No, I think it was perfect. Um, for us. Don't take it back. That's no, absolutely fine. Yeah. No, and don't I, take it back. I think it was a, just a little bit of come on. Oh, give me more. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I liked it. It was good. We've been saying there's ne- not enough mental celebrations now. No, let's get right away. Oh, when I score, I'm a terrible. I, my, I just go mental. Right. I'm terrible at celebrating. Next season, next season, I want you to make a promise to us. Okay. Go on. If you score against Ipswich, yeah. Okay. Again. Again. Yeah. Well, it's not not it's not difficult. If you score against Ipswich, mm. you need to give it a T for TNC. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Whatever you do, just no just give it the T. We're, we're, si- find you we're, in the si- we're sitting in the lower Barclay, okay. so that's ideal. Right. If not, right. if not, if not okay, just well. give it the T. Just give oh, it the T. You spend half the game like giving it the abuse to away. I never get that football match. As if it's like going to really kick off after the game, like yeah, yo. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then when it comes back, we're, we're off. We're off. I went to the Brighton Playoff final. Yeah. Year two thousand and four, I think it was, against Bristol City. And my bro- well, I went with loads of us in a minibus, yeah, and two of the lads got chucked out of the ground within four minutes. I missed the whole game because they wanted to fight Bristol City fans. Do you want to hear a story about our, our day at Wembley? One of my mates. So obviously we were we were on the we were on the beverages, yeah, um, early doors. Course. Got there, and um, my mate went to the toilet, and we saw him after the game. Is this Snads? No, this isn't Snads. He Snadsy. He'd fallen asleep on the toilet. Missed the whole game. So no, he didn't. You didn't and these after no, he, he walked didn't. in, final. he was still absolutely smashed. Walked in after, thinking <laughs> he was there for the start of the match, and we were all walking out. He was that out of the game. Yeah. Well, it's a story, isn't it? But I feel sorry for you, whoever it is. <laughs> um, is it your question? Don't drink before the game. Yeah, don't drink or don't drink excessively don't, before the game. Don't drink. Don't drink. Don't get. What about the Liverpool goal by that way? Oh, yeah, that was good, that was wasn't it? Really? That. Sorry, Leo, my son. That's a good story to tell him one day. That must have been a mental day. I've got a brilliant that was, video that, of that. That was a insane, brilliant to be video. honest. Thankfully, Delia and the guys let me go on their plane. And yes. then she was like, I'm going to leave you alone. You need to sleep. And I was like, I, I couldn't sleep every two minutes. So what do the lads call you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, what are you going to call your little boy? I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but it was it was mental, honestly, I got, I got to the warm-up and I said to him, I was so dizzy. So yeah. I hadn't eaten. I'd literally had a, a protein shake with some oats in it, a smoothie and stuff, because I didn't have time. And bless my wife. She was amazing. Cause it, baby Leo was born about ten past nine. I looked up and said... I've still got a chance here because I spoke to Alex. Yeah, <laughs> I love and he was that. Like, Look, if you can get back up, get back up. <laughs> the, plane, the, plane, the plane's leaving at twelve. Yeah. And then we circled the airport for ages. So Alex said he had to go into the captain's meetings. They weren't sure. And I remember the taxi, the car we were in, took the traffic was horrendous. Yeah. So I literally got out, bag on, just running through the park across oh, the park super. to the ground. And Norwich fans were like, <laughs> Who's that? What's going yeah. on? Or eat Russell? Yeah. <laughs> that's quite a good accent, right? Well, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Been I'll a Canary call next season. Hey, Roy Boy. Like oh, that's another thing I don't pay attention to. Yeah. Oh, you don't. We, stay, we have to stay away. No from offense. That, to, no offense to Rob. I don't even listen to that. That is, <laughs> that is the the most negative thing. Anyway, um, question. Okay, me and Jack got asked this one the other day, and it made us feel quite uncomfortable. So naturally, okay. we thought we'd ask you yeah. the same question. What questions this? If you had to go on a rom- romantic dinner. Yeah. With a single Norwich player, who would it be, oh, and why? Good question. Uh, you can understand now why that, we felt uncomfortable asking question. this. Uh, who would it be? Just one. Just one. Yeah. Wes. Yeah. Oh, why? Really? Why? No nonsense. Just quiet yeah. sits there. Those lovely blue eyes, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Have a crack, Wes. I love Wes. What would you order? What food? 
Well, being a a vegan, vegan, it wouldn't be mm. too much. I don't know, where's What's your favourite vegetable? Definitely wouldn't go for that. Favourite vegetable? Favourite vegetable. Well, like. These are up there. Mm. They're probably artichokes, actually. Ooh, oh, artichokes. Oh, artichokes. Yeah, yeah. Really? Mm. Solid. That's I'm going to nick one of Chris's questions here. What? Yeah, See my sweat patches on camera. Yeah, you can't. Sorry about that. I'll sorry. keep your arm down. Yeah, keep, we'll let you off. Tucking. Double sessions. Um, it does yeah. Now, Michael Bailey, mm. who you've obviously tried to copy his beard, <laughs> got, gone down the hill. I think it was the other way around, actually. Oh, was it? Yeah, I've done it in the last season. Oh, I like the beard. Oh, After the interview. Did he? And all of a sudden, he sprouted up with an unbelievable beard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's like yeah. Michael Bailey. I'll tell you what, the consistency throughout that beard is, is, is impressive. He's looking strong. I saw him in Ireland last week. I saw him it's looking mm. strong. It's getting I went to trim mine in last season, accidentally like shaved it off, and which like, you look horrendous, so I grew it straight back. Anyway, which. Miss you, mate. He probably won't watch this, but just in case. Well, send it to him. Yeah, okay, we'll send it to him. Don't don't um, don't show emotional. previous videos though. <laughs> <laughs> don't like me, which don't watch any of it. Um, anyway, Michael, the biggest exclusive about that podcast mm. is he says. Has he been on here? Is he? Yeah. Okay. I cannot believe you're stealing my question. Sorry, I'm taking cool. it. It's my question. Yes, trying to look at um, it. Are the rumours true that Alex Pritchard smells absolutely divine? <laughs> Because this is what um, Bailey said, and I think you need to give him some stick for this, by the way. I think most lads do. I think all of really, them, yeah, uh, like the male loads grooming of, and all loads that. Of yeah. perfume everywhere, you never know yeah. who you're going to bump into. And, yeah, um, Pritch does smell pretty good, actually. Does he? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, he does actually. Who, you don't sound convinced. So who is the best? No, guy? he does. No, I'm just trying to think that it does. Yeah. <laughs> just, just puts, just puts him in a state of yeah. just. What after show have you got Come, on today? What have I got on today? Tom Ford, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. The plug, there you go. Um, I'm not sponsored by Tom I'm Ford. I'm sure he yet, needs that plug, doesn't he? <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Tom, if you need me, I'm here. <laughs> Hang on, we need some sponsorship. Yeah, let's talk. Right, you're in. Your question. Um, Quick fire, Jack. Come on. I think we've, I think we've pretty much shown... Oh, I'll tell you what. Who's been your best mate in Norwich over time? Um, it's been a couple. Matty Gill, Andy Crofts, He's Simon bad, Lappin. He? Yeah, he is brilliant. Oh, brilliant. By the way, brilliant, brilliant coach. Yeah. Um, Simon Lappin was around my house yesterday. With his kids having a barbie. Is he still so, looking like the King of Spain? Oh, he's so smooth, isn't he? Well groomed. He's so oh. yeah. What a guy. Speaking of which, we need you to do us a favour. We need you to get Pinto on here because he, he is just hashtag mad, pitch war yellow army. Yeah. Oh, pit- hashtag we fight before we win. <laughs> like Love it, Eva. Yes. Get him on. Can you get him on? I'll try. At least ask him. I'll try. Just say you know pitch war yellow army and maybe he'll. He's a good guy, Eva. Does, yeah. it, does he just quote that everywhere afterwards? No, I don't think he realises the lad's just battering for it. See, but, so. but on a serious note, I actually... So you don't, you've not <coughs> you, really you massive fan of social. That, you guys fan, love no, but, yeah, but fans love it because it, it shows that they really care. I know. I know it's a bit cringy for a footballer. I know, but then we've had lads who like tweet brilliant stuff. They'll walk past the gym and then take a picture of the gym and go, oh, what a session. Yeah, well, that's So that's that frustrates the lads. But Evo is a genuine guy, so that's, yeah, but that's, that's what why I mean. he doesn't yeah. get too why much stick about it. Just because you don't get a... So for me, like perception and reality in football are, are miles apart. So like for people at the club, they have a, who work at the club day in day out will have mm. a really different opinion on on players who you only see for ninety minutes. Right. And 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 on social media, so like in social media, they can they can sort of mould a persona for themselves that's totally different to actually mm-hmm. how they are. Do you, do you know what I mean? So yep. like someone can make out of the hardest working, the best professional, mm-hmm. but actually it can be really different from that. But do you not do you not think? I'm not sort of throwing any players under the bus, but if they put you great are. session, no, because I don't know, I don't know who it'd be. But no, if you actually do it, if you practice what you preach, it's not mm. a problem. No, no, I agree. But if if someone's putting that perception out there, it's, it's surely positive for the fans, and surely the people are, are buying into that. As long as oh, they yeah. then perform on the Saturday, one hundred percent. If they're doing it, if you just walk past the gym and go bang, great session. Yeah. Then, well, in by the, the way, that person's not here anymore. So I, can't, I, I, I don't oh, even know. Who that would be. Hey. Comment below. You think that might be? <laughs> Interesting, interesting. But stuff like that, you know. Would, would, would you have been on social it, media? Uh, I was on Twitter when it really went really early, and then I kind of saw the way it was going, mm. and uh, come off there. I think it's really. I think there's been quite a few people come off there recently in terms of like celebrities and yeah. stuff like that. Mm. Um, Ed Sheeran. I think people. Yeah, exactly. People go on there to have a moan, right? Most of the time, they're not yep. going and go. I've had a, yeah, you know, an amazing day. Well, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go on there. And it's how the, it started off as message boards when I started playing, like a Wickham and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. I, and when you're a young player, you go on there. Like I'll admit to that, and I'm sure some of the young lads, I'm sure some of the young lads, the first thing they do after a game yeah. is go on Twitter yeah. and search their name. Yeah. If they've had a good game or whatever, it's a little ego boost. But as you get but older, the, you realise. But in the you know, era, that I think that's actually quite a good thing. I see, listen, I think, and people, I think it's great that you're you you being here today. This is what players should be doing. Well, they because need it means now. so yeah. much to the fans. It really does. It really, I think really for does. me, like it's important to connect with the fans. If it's a real connection, if you're actually given a true reflection of, yeah. of what sort of person you are and the character you are. Yeah. But I think when it becomes just a tool for you to sort of fool people a little bit and 
and and to okay yeah just to keep people player. on a little bit yeah it does yeah. and it'll it, not just me it'll be annoyed by that the other players are annoyed by right that. next question for me is would you like to be the manager of Norwich City one day uh, obviously after you've gone up with Daniel Farker and he's ch- taken us to the Champions League yeah uh I have to be careful. Being honest, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's something I'm working towards now and it's something um, I feel okay. I could, I could, hopefully could be... So you're not going to go back to Brighton then at all? Because you have got, obviously... obviously no, I, feel like, I genuinely feel like, listen, Brighton's my home and all my family's still there and I've set up a foundation there and stuff yeah. like that. But I genuinely feel like this football club, it, it's it's part of me now. Like It sounds a bit corny and a bit cliche. And oh, like, but, no, I love it. But Keep genuinely, saying. like, I feel... I know the football club really, really well. I think I know what the fans, what they demand of their football club, what sort of club yeah. they want to see. And they'll get that with this manager and I hope it's massively successful. I hope he's here for the next five, ten years and I want to learn off him. And every yeah. manager I've taken bits from that I really like, bits I don't like so much, I've That's always fast. been learning. And I've done my A licence now, I've completed You've that. You've done yeah. the A licence? Yeah, yeah, so I'll look to do my pro awesome. in the next couple of years and I'm going to do a couple of like, management course and bit sports management stuff like that because I think you just want to be I want to be as prepared as I possibly can That's and I don't know how it's going to happen it might be that I transition from doing a coaching job somewhere in the yep. club or whatever and in four years time I might be so fed up with it, actually I don't want to be manager but at this moment in time I've always said it since I was 18, 19 I want to be a manager Yeah. and and hopefully one day I'll be at this I think you make a good gaffer you do I think you make a good gaffer so you've spoken about the youth players already we've spoken about the atmosphere already so I think that's pretty much my, my questions out on the back of the uh, you want to be a manager What's your record like a football manager? I haven't played it for years. I FIFA? FIFA like, football manager? You sound like Nuri Sahin and people like that. Nuri Sahin? That's a remember, throwback. Do you remember like, there's a few players like Cherno Sambu who's unbelievable yeah. on that I'm showing my age now. But you always just signed them lads, didn't you? And then, I don't know, super complex for me. My, right? biggest, my biggest regret on football manager, I went with Luton for some reason when they were in the conference. And I took I took him to big things. I took him to the championship. We went into the Premier <laughs> League. You went into the Premier League. Yeah. Side a chap called, called Carl Shepherd from Shamrock Rovers. Who he was scoring like forty a season. Took a punt on But him. I let go of Andre Gray on a free. Big mistake. You know? oh, big he idea. wasn't doing it for me in the conference. Dear, though, right, dear, dear, right, dear, right, dear, dear. So dear. And we all know that the football manager's so real life as well. It's a good game. It is a, it's good, a game. good game. Right. Um, two things we always have on the podcast. I think. Well, we like to think it's people's favourite segment, but it's, it's not. But we want it to be. It's moan of the week. Now we're from Norfolk. We've always got something to moan about. Is that Norfolk thing? Is it? We just love a moan, yeah. don't we? Yeah. We're never happy. Maybe yeah. we should I call it, it like... a British thing. Like anyone successful, like lucky, lucky. Buddy. Oh yeah, that's that's must be true. Yeah. What, what are you unhappy about this week? It could be about anything. What am I happy about? This what week? You, what's your moan of the week? Could be anything. Could be life related. It doesn't need to be Norfolk. Maybe it's too deep. Week. But no, go on. Give us an exclusive. Yeah, let's have a think. <laughs> Did Johnny Housen leave anything behind that annoyed you? Did well, I was rooming with him in Ireland. Where, where are you? He left me a pair of recovery socks. Cheers, Johnny. Unwrapped, open. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, they were new. Sorry, they were unwrapped. Brand oh, new. well done, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks no, for they've that. Gone straight on. Um, don't be worth anything anymore. He doesn't play for Norwich, does he? So. Yeah. No, I'm only, I haven't really got. I'm quite positive. But I don't. Have you been shopping recently? I love how Russ, Russ is like me. I always struggle for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Always struggle. I don't know, lads. If I had, a, if you should have texted me that one. I thought about it. Okay. I well, we can go at this minute in time. Nothing. All right. Probably my kids waking up really early, like half five. Uh, like, oh. Daddy, after a double session as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that, Chris. What's your moan of the week? Um, my moan of the week is house and going because <laughs> I didn't. We haven't spoke about house. I didn't. I, I I didn't want him to go. I thought he could have still um, given the club a lot of value. I know he wanted to go, but I feel like. Him being one of the consistent, most consistent players in recent seasons, I'm, I'm just disappointed. Uh, I'm just disappointed that he's that he's left. I think it's a, I think it's a shame. Um, you know, the, when he scores, it's always a worldie, and he just kept his head down. He did all the right things. He didn't really bark when he probably had the right to bark at a few people. Um, so I'm disappointed about that. I'm disappointed about that. Are you disappointed to see him going? Uh, yeah, of course, because like he's a great footballer, but more importantly, he's he's a, he's a great lad. He's a great person. Uh, really quiet, really understated. Just mm. gets on with it. Really good professional. Um, but there comes a time, like I said, there's other factors. There's external factors. Maybe he's a family and, man. Then. You know, he's wanted to go home for quite a while, and he he's, he gave us another year, um, and he played really really well in that year. And uh, I think it got to a point where actually it probably comes to a point where it benefits both. Parties. We got a good money for a 29-year-old player. Admittedly, he's one. You know, he's a loss on the pitch, yeah. um, but it gives us money to replace him. And also, if someone's not fully, his heart's not fully somewhere. I don't think you get the best out of them, yeah, regardless of totally Johnny agree. House and totally Brian Dollars, You know, whoever it is. So, 
he goes with the lad's best wishes. Obviously, we're disappointing to see him go as a person, as a player, but you know, you're pleased for the club and you're pleased mm-hmm. with Johnny that both parties actually probably mm-hmm. in the end got you know got the, we had the best out of Johnny for sure. Um, he gave everything he got, and that is true. End, actually, it's, it's it's up, there's point. no, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not acrimonious. It's mm-hmm. all been, it's all been. I know that there was a few things said about his last couple of days, and I know he found that really difficult. Um, mm. But he felt. Was that fair, the Stuart Webber statement? Um, was that needed? I think there's been a lot of stuff that's probably untrue about we've been desperate to sell Johnny and stuff mm. like that, which isn't the case. I think Stuart was really fair with Johnny, and Johnny mm. would say exactly the same thing. Uh, where in the end, everyone's got a price at the football club. Someone matched that price, and they've let him go. Yeah. Uh, so they've been honest from the start mm. with each other. Um, and I think, you what know, price are you? like I said, I don't think Johnny would intend. I don't know. Well, what would you value yourself in the market now? 30 years old. Uh, Go on. I don't know, solid three mil maybe. How much, <laughs> is, how much is, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But you'd earn a good money back on me anyway. <laughs> Definitely. Um, what did Graham go for a mil? Yeah, a million pound, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, but yeah, it's worked out probably, I know fans. I think it's a win win, yeah. Mark, but yeah, in the end. My moan of the week, people who run for tubes, you know the tube? Yeah. Why oh, yeah, do people yeah, run yeah. for it? They come like every minute. There's one every minute, yeah. So why, is, do, why yeah, do people run? That. Yeah. People moan. I was in London at the weekend and I was like, I still don't understand why people yeah, do this. A good moan. Everyone's in a rush in London, aren't they? It's an amazing city, but everyone's in a rush. Yeah, mm. I'm not fan. Right, it's, it's, that's, so, that's so Norfolk, isn't it? It's like, I was running. Why are you running? Just yeah. chill so laid back up here, isn't it? Just chill out. When um, I first signed, I couldn't believe how relaxed it was. Like queuing in the shop and the guy behind the counter is just like taking ages. It's like, yeah. What's going on? Like, yeah. you don't no, know. I'm like that, yeah. In it's Morrison's good. on a match day is a nightmare. You're queuing down the aisles. <laughs> That's good, You're yeah. warming up and I'm still there. My pie's gone cold by the time I've got to the front of the, <laughs> the cashier. It's a nightmare. He's buying a pie at Morrison's when he's got Delia's pies in the ground. What's going on there? Without Delia's pies. If well, they were Delia's pies, I Just admitted to that. Well, I'll give sorry. you two quid to the club. I'll tell you what If is. Delia made the pies... That's a guaranteed question every year at the AGM about the pies. Yeah, or it's, not. it's a genuine question. Yeah, people are like, well, the pies are up the stand. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a it. genuine thing. Gosh, these are the things that we care about. I want to come to the AGM, let's do it. All right, let's I do want it. To see about the pies. So, <laughs> um, uh, by the way, pie for them, what's your, what's your go to pie? Oh, I suppose you're vegan then, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. It'd just be like mushroom or something now. Oh. Mushroom and bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. It used to be chicken and mushroom. Chicken and leek, yeah. actually. Have you converted any of, any of the other lads to, to a the few vegan? A few eat quite. A lot of the meals that the yeah, chef makes, the but not chefs at the club are brilliant. They sort of do everyone else meal, and it's a pain in the bum so they rotate it. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. do it today. <laughs> um, but they're brilliant. Yeah, some of the lads, like Wes takes a lot of it. That's um, good. Robbie Brady, before he left, loads of it. Seb did last year. They're always like, oh, what's that? And then they bat me for it, and then two weeks later, they'll be yeah, trying something. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, good then, man, so good. you're obviously you're an upbeat person. What's the thing you're buzzing about this week? Say Except Madison. I say Madison every week, so if you say Madison, that'll help me. I'm buzzing about being back training with the lads because oh. I, I missed last week. I thought week, he was going to so say his contract. I was, playing contract. I was oh, hoping you were going to say your contract. That was last week, going not the contract? Oh, yeah, that was, was actually, news, yeah, yeah, sorry. Old news. You're old but, yeah, now. still buzzing about that, of course. So you're just pumped on life, basically? Yeah, listen, I'm really excited about this season. I think I'm really... I'm kind of one in person who puts things into perspective a little bit. Football is the it's most just... important of the least important things in life. Yeah. I care 100% and I'm, I love football more than anyone, but... You have to sometimes take a step back and go, look, we're all in it because we enjoy it, right? You come to the games because you enjoy it. We're all in it together, You're talking yeah. to other people because they love the football club. Mm. And this year, I just want everyone... And I said it at the end of last season. I probably got hammered for it then. And it wasn't a dig at anyone, but this season's a clean slate. Like, yeah. Let's start on it. And it's, no, it totally might not happen really. overnight. It might take a few games like it did Huddersfield last year and all that. But I really It'll believe, click. yeah, we've got a real good group of players. Still a real good group of players for this league that have got done, done mm. before. Added with a few exciting young ones and a few... People are unknown mm. that are coming in, so it's um, two touch football. It's yeah, going to be it's fast. Loads of positivity. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm hoping to see some slide challenges into the snake pit because that's what that's what fires us up. But that's another <laughs> a thing. little slide tackle. No, 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 big one. Oh, big one. So if you've if <laughs> you've got, if, if, if you've, <laughs> yeah, if you've lost the ball near the snake pit and you just smash just in a someone. huge challenge, even though you lost it, the ball, it means so much more. It's brilliant, that. Who who's the that came was it. like um. It's like a come so on. We had, a, we had one of the foreign boys. Was like, I don't get it. Your fans celebrate a tackle, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a clearance. Like you kick the ball away from goal really far in the stand. Everyone's like, yeah. 
Because it's it. just a thing, isn't it? Zimmerman say he's got a passion for slider tackles. Oh, he uh, loves it, a big man, yeah. Does yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, he loves it. Does I'm he? buzzing. What have you got a passion for, <coughs> defending-wise? Passion for defending Looking after wise. Angus, it'll be the next season, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just try and talk to people to make your job as easy as possible, so. Good, I like that. Right, Chris, what are you excited about? Or is that you? Yeah. Um, Madison, still excited about Madison. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited about the fact that Jacob Murphy's staying and that Newcastle aren't going to sign him. I think he's a top talent. Super excited for him to be given more responsibility next season. Super excited for people to stop criticising him because he's got to... The whole reason why he's on the pitch is to be creative. Of course, he's got to have some some sort of defensive mindset in there, but he's not that type of player. So now, hopefully, the fans will understand what he's here for with the new style of football, the new philosophy. I think Jacob Murphy will tear it up, and that's what I'm most excited about this, this week. Two things I'm excited about. You don't have to. Yeah, go on. Vrancic's haircut. Oh, amazing. Impressive. Very good. Very I good. think you should all dye it blonde. I've already told him it's amazing. Have, Have you? you? Yeah. I, I can imagine you appreciate it. I was like, I think it was the first thing I said to him. I said, Mario, you've got great hair. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's a weird Do you welcome them in? Are you the first player huh? that speaks to them? Most of them, yeah. I've yeah, got this yeah, vision, yeah, like, yeah, I've got this vision that um, Delia says, hey, Russ, by the way, We've just we've just landed Mario. Do you mind just dropping him a line? Yeah, I, I usually just, if, if I'm not at the, the club, I'll drop him a text or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. Say, look, anything. I've been here a long time, so anything you need, just That's let class. me know. I won't Good. be able to produce anything, but I'll try. <laughs> have you got a WhatsApp group? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, have you? What's it called? Yeah, is it just called NTFC? Oh, or? Just hit the mic. Sorry, I choose. It's actually called Phil's Messages. Phil's. Yeah, yeah Phil. Phil played the on. Yeah, yeah, legend. Yeah, no, nothing on there right now, but yeah. Phil's been ruthless though. He literally just deleted all the lads that have left, and we were like quite keen on keeping Carl Lafferty in because he's good value. But Phil's no, just gone no, no interest. Off you go. I'm with Phil. No yeah, interest. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, good on him. Ruthless, I'm totally with him. Ruthless Liffy, but no, that's good. He's a good. Some of the stuff on there though. We were, we hardcore. Were yeah, yeah. Um, hardcore. Good. The other thing I'm excited about you coming on, Ross. It's, genu- it's been a genuine pleasure. It Thank really you. has, and it's Thank good to have me. someone. A, a person Cheers, old boy. To and um, oh, Jack, give, Jack, you've changed your tune <laughs> until the first game of the season. Well, yeah, first game, of the, game of the season. Yeah. First game of the season. <laughs> no. He's got no technical ability. <laughs> He's useless. I don't care that he cares. <laughs> Screw the tea. <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Russ, no, it's been a pleasure. I think, um, I think it's been pain free, lads. Up. Thank you. By the way, them sweat patches are great. I should have worn a dark shirt. Top man. Thank you.